Well, good morning, people loved by God. This is morning prayer for July the 1st, 2021. I'm Pastor Steve Woodfin from Our Shepherd Lutheran Church in Birmingham, Michigan, surrounded by the organ pipes for two reasons. Number one, because the psalm we'll hear today talks about singing loud praises to God, and our organ certainly helps us to do that. And secondly, because I wanted to point out to you folks uh, from Our Shepherd that starting July the 12th, for 64 days, we're going to be without an organ as this whole beautiful instrument is restored and reconfigured and mechanical components replaced by electronic ones. It's going to be absolutely glorious when it's done, but it's going to take all of 64 days to do it. And so we'll, uh, we'll do some devotions, uh, uh, some morning prayers during that time when the pipes are gone as well. Uh, to see what that looks like. It really is such a huge visual presence in our sanctuary. It's going to be very strange to see them all gone for, for those two months. Well, let's begin in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Psalm 47, beginning at verse 1. Clap your hands, all peoples. Shout to God with loud songs of joy. For the Lord the Most High is to be feared, a great king over all the earth. He subdued peoples under us and nations under our feet. He chose our heritage for us, the pride of Jacob, whom he loves. God has gone out with a shout, the, lo the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises to our King. Sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth. Sing praises with a psalm. What a beautiful picture of praise. It's just joyful worship and, and clapping of hands and loud singing and shouting. It's just all coming from the joy that, um, as the psalmist wrote, uh, comes from knowing that God has chosen, up, chosen us, made us his people, made us his holy nation. And speaking of uh, Gentiles coming into the God's holy nation and his people, uh, we see today in Acts chapter 10, the story of Peter approaching Cornelius and his family with the word of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Cornelius's servants called out to ask whether Simon, who was called Peter, was lodging there. And while Peter was pondering the vision, the spirit said to him, Behold, there are three men who are looking for you. Get the door. <laughs> Rise up and go down and accompany them without hesitation, for I have sent them. And Peter went down and to the man and, and he said to them, I am the one you are looking for. What is the reason for your coming? And they said, Cornelius, a centurion, an upright and God-fearing man, who is well spoken of by the whole Jewish nation, was directed by a holy angel to send for you to come to his house and to hear what you have to say. So he invited them in to be his guests. The next day he rose and went away with them and some of the brothers from Joppa accompanied him. And on the following day, they entered Caesarea. Cornelius was expecting them and had called together his relatives and close friends. When Peter entered, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshiped him. But Peter lifted him up saying, stand up, I too am a man. And as he talked with him, he went in and found many persons gathered. And he said to them, you yourselves know how unlawful it is for a Jew to associate with or to visit anyone of another nation. But God has shown me that I should not call any person common or unclean. So when I was sent for, I came without objection. I asked then why you sent for me. And Cornelius said, four days ago, about this hour, I was praying in my house at the ninth hour, and behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing and said, Cornelius, your prayer has been heard and your alms have been remembered before God. Send therefore to Joppa and ask for Simon, who is called Peter. He is lodging in the house of Simon, a tanner by the sea. So I sent for you at once, and you have been kind enough to come. Now therefore, we are all here in the presence of God to hear all that you have been commanded by the Lord. Well, that's where the reading ends for today. Don't you want to hear what, what Peter says to Cornelius and all his relatives and friends? Well, you can tune in tomorrow morning and Pastor Gertner he may talk about that. <laughs> There's lots of Bible passages for each day's prayers, and we, we each uh, choose which ones we're going to kind of follow. So uh, I'll find out if he lets you know the rest of the story or not. But the story here today is really important 
You know, Peter lays it out very clearly. He says, you yourselves know how unlawful it is for a Jew to associate with anyone or visit anyone of another nation. And yet God showed him in a vision prior to this reading that all things were clean, that God doesn't label anything unclean, especially people. Yet there were Christians in the early Christian church that were still living with their foot in both worlds. They, they had a saving faith in Christ, but still were trying to live by all the rules and regulations of the Jewish nation, the ones that they had grown up with, the ones that had just been a part of their lives from the very beginning. And one of them being, of course, that you don't associate with anyone. So here we have this situation with all these new Christians who are, are told to go and love others like uh, they love themselves and to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. And they're doing it with other Jews and avoiding telling the Gentiles among them, the Romans, the citizens, uh, the Greeks, the others who were there in, the, in and around them. Uh, but the vision shown to Peter made it clear, and then he made it clear uh, in his own letters that all people, all people, um, uh, are, are fit because of uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ to, to hear and receive that word of salvation. God declared it to be. And so Peter began sharing the news of Jesus with Gentiles as well. Praise the Lord for that, that we are all considered worthy, not by anything that we've done, but because of the fact that Jesus died for all. And so we are all fit to receive the, um, the good news of the gospel and by God's grace alone, receive saving faith in his kingdom. And so I ask you today, just like I, I ask myself too, is there someone that you encounter in your daily life or from time to time that needs to hear the word of God, that needs to hear that saving word of grace, but there's something keeping you from telling them? They may be from a, a different place in society. They may be a different color. They may be, um, they may be homeless and you pass them on the street. They may be someone that you just don't like. <laughs> and so it's hard to share good news with someone that treats you badly, right? All these different reasons that we have, and I'm as guilty as anyone else, of um, not sharing the gospel. Uh, we look at this story today and say, wow, if Peter can walk into a, the house of a Roman centurion, uh, which was just completely antithetical to what the Jewish nation stood for at the time, then I can approach someone that perhaps I'm not completely comfortable with and love that person because Christ has loved me. Let's share um, a prayer together and uh, let's say a Luther's morning prayer as well as we close today. Lord God, Heavenly Father, you called Cornelius the Gentile soldier to hear the word proclaimed for his salvation and that of his entire household. As he responded to the hearing of your word with the giving of alms, so also may we be led to acts of mercy and charity as we embody Christ in our daily lives. And Lord, may those acts of mercy and charity include sharing the love and the gospel of Jesus Christ with people that perhaps we find it difficult to do so with. Lord, bless us by your spirit and embolden us in order to share that word of love and eternal life that you have given to us through your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we pray. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Well, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace now and forever. Amen. Have a glorious July 1st and a, and a glorious uh, Independence Day weekend as well. Uh, I, join, I join with your prayers in thanking God uh, for this nation in which we live.